if you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. Hey, I'm going to make another quick video here. If you've ever run into this where, you know, you're starting to work on something and you're like, ah, oh, man, that feels really tight. There's a way that we could find out how tight something is without like crazy calibration equipment. And that's simply our torque wrench. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. This bolt we thought was supposed to be torqued to 96 inch pounds. So if I go to 96, the bolt isn't even wanting to move or do anything. So all you simply got to do is just start turning it up. I don't even need to read the dial. I could just sit here and keep going. This thing's pretty tight. Once it's once it'll move, then that means that you could quit, look at the torque wrench, and you'll know how tight it is. I think it's really tight. Anybody want to put in the comments right now? You can hit the pause button and kind of guess. This torque wrench is actually going to max out. I'm not budging this bolt at all, and I quit at, I'm almost to 200 inch pounds. That's 100% over torqued, and, I, and it hasn't even budged. Make sense? Anyway, this is, this is how you can tell whether it's brakes, doesn't matter what the fastener is. If you want to know what something was torqued to, where this tip works really well is for dealers that are training new techs or shops. Doesn't have to be a dealer or shop where, you know, a tech comes up and goes, oh yeah, I broke this bolt or whatnot. You can go to a bolt similar next to it that they also worked on. A good example, I use this on where brakes, where a tech breaks one bolt and I go and I check their work on the other bolt and find out like this, I can tell like it's way over tightened, okay? What I wanted, what I was hoping to see is 96 felt, 96 let's say was the spec, 96 inch pounds. And I was hoping that maybe I'd get up to 108, 112, 115 or something, and then it would start to move. And I go, oh, you're just over a little bit. This tells me one thing. We have human error or we have a calibration. Maybe the wrong wrench was used. Maybe someone accidentally mixed up Newton meters and foot pounds and just got their numbers goofy. There's, there's ways that that can happen, but at least it helps you identify like there's something I need to change in my technique or equipment so that I don't create a problem. That's it, my friends. If you haven't done so, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Make it a great day. As always, keep wrenching. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to check out the first video. Uh, I'll have a link in the description below. But what inspired me to uh, grab the camera and teach us a lesson about uh, stretch bolts and... First off, I showed you how to check a bolt that you're going, whoa, I just think it's way too tight. And you want to see how tight is it. But I want to show you some examples of stretch bolts and get you to think about uh, the reuse of fasteners. And in the power sports industry especially, we really take for granted that our manuals rarely tell us to replace a bolt. Once in a while, they'll say replace this fastener. It's one-time use. Uh, more common on nuts and securing fasteners as far as like washers where you bend over a tab or things like that. But when it comes to the, the bolts themselves, the manuals were never really wrote to talk about uh, like how many times it could be used. And there's a lot of fasteners where there just isn't an expected uh, removal and installation. That's the same case for a lot of auto fasteners that they build that vehicle, they think people are going to leave it alone, it's going to go out and uh, run for 100,000 miles and that th there's really not that worry. So it really falls on the, the technician, the do-it-yourself mechanic to understand like uh, when should I replace a fastener because the manual isn't telling you to. So uh, taking all your bolts out and looking at them really close. Sometimes you got to get a magnifying glass and laying them all out and seeing if any are longer than others and so on when they're all supposed to be the same uh, height. That's a really good way to, to uh, assess it uh, initially. But then you need to really just uh, take a look at really the size of the fastener and think, you know, how often are these, you know, over tightened. In the power sports industry, we have the six millimeter by 1.0 uh, thread pitch. Those are extremely over tightened. I see a lot of valve covers, case covers, uh, block off plates, different things where they use these small fasteners and people grossly over torque them. So that is just a uh, recommendation I've taught students forever is just lay all your fasteners out, compare them, and then really consider the age of the vehicle. What do you know about it? How many times has it been apart? Should I consider replacing these fasteners because uh, of, of maybe a lot of service records where somebody's been in there a lot or high mileage or so on. But 
A little bit of prevention now will save you a world of trouble later on. Uh, when these bolts snap off, they're not always as easy to get out as I show in this first video, but uh, you're, you're really just having to make a lot of decisions based on experience. And I'll, I'll tell you this from my experience where I really went wrong initially was simply just laying all the fasteners out and uh, inspecting them. A lot of times fasteners end up in a bolt bucket or a piece of cardboard you poke through or what back in the cover until you go put it on. You don't really look Look at the fastener. So, huge fan of uh, not only looking at the fasteners, but making sure that you look at and, and analyze the internal threads as well. That there's no uh, no issues or anything there. Now's the time to fix or do anything before trying to shove something in a dirtier, damaged hole. And like I said, by looking at the fastener, you gain the ability to go, whoa, something's not right here, and then fix it the right way. So hope you found this video useful. Make sure and like, share, subscribe. We'd appreciate you joining the channel. Throw a couple bucks our way as a way to support us. As always, make it a great day, and keep wrenching.